Yes, we are live. Five seconds in and ready to go. Mm -hmm. It has mm -hmm. been a minute. It's been a little bit, man. It's been a little bit, you know. Um, you know, we, we we, we've been on the new year, right? I don't know. Have we? Man, we have to check. Have, um, we, been, have we been off air for a month? That's that's actually kind of interesting, man. I, that's a good question, man. I don't know. Man, um, for it hadn't been that long, has it? I don't know. It's it's been a crazy new year. I'll tell you what. <laughs> has it been that long? It might have been a month. I don't um, know. We have to check. Huh? If so, if one of y'all remembers the last time we were yeah, on, yeah, for real. <laughs> let us know. Somebody knows. Somebody's got to know. Somebody's out there. Somebody knows. I can't um, remember. I can't remember either, man. Um. Share, I, I share. Know, we're doing man. our share, share. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're doing. We just fumbling around. If yeah, you, if you on here, if you on here, hit share because you know, sharing is caring. And, and we need today, your love. We need your sharing. There's definitely going to be one of those. For real, for real. Yeah, you're going to share now so they can watch and chime in, or you're going to share after. <laughs> I'm going to share now, man. I was talking to people. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking to me. You know how I am when I multitask, man. I, you know, I can do one thing really well, but, uh, but you know, when I start doing all kinds of multiple things, you know, rarely is it a good thing. Yeah, that's um, most of us, especially us dudes. But you know, I mean, I'm good. I'm when I do one thing, man. I'm good at it. When I do one thing, I'm really, really good at. It may it. not last long, but we're good at it. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, see, <laughs> see, you added all that little extra in there. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't add all that in there. What, what extra? What happened? We may not last long. <laughs> you know I mean, the focus. I meant focus. You know you what meant I focus. meant? Focus. Yeah, I know what you meant. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's what I say. Uh -huh. Focus. Yeah. May not uh -huh. be able to focus very long. Yeah, right, right, right. And we're, right, we're, we're, doing a, we're giving a good example of our ability to focus right now. Yeah, we're just mumbling right now. If you uh, if you jump it in here, we're just mumbling and bumbling. Go ahead and while you're waiting uh, for the next 30 seconds or so, hit like, hit share. Hit share for real because this is going to yeah. be the one. This is. Man, I'm telling you, this is uh, this is this is right up the alley right now, man. Yeah, this, this is, is obviously a hot topic because we just posted today <laughs> and have been getting inundated. Man, it's like a bee's nest, man. And, it's like uh, it's like we stepped into a bee's nest, man. It's like whoa, what happened? You know, bus all all of a sudden, man. It's uh, so, it then got real up in this joint real quick. Um, now we now now we know what y'all want. Now we know what y'all want, man. Now we know what y'all want. So hey, man. I tell you what, for everybody that's watching, in case you don't know, I am Kirk M. Samuels. And I am Jason B. Kendrick. Woo, and we are the mad men of masculinity, baby. That's right. We're just real men having real conversations for you. For you. I gotta throw in, I gotta throw in a for you. You know what I'm saying? Because that's and what we're doing tonight, it for. Tonight. Oh man. See, so the, the hitch is, you know, we're mad, we're not mad like angry. We're mad like crazy and not even a bad crazy. We the good crazy. Like we crazy about the idea of masculinity and those things that are that are surrounding the whole notion of masculinity, not only just for for men, but but also from a woman's perspective, too, in terms of women insight into masculinity and masculinity from a woman's perspective, because we get all kinds of feedback. Yes. And uh, speaking of feedback, man, <laughs> JBK, feedback. JBK, man, we done got one for you today. brother. <laughs> get your oh, yeah. popcorn ready. Buckle your seatbelts. First of all, the the whole notion of this topic actually came from uh, from a from a female, and and you know because we we we're all about what people want to talk about, right? Yeah. So we love feedback, we love input, and we love giving our 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 spin, our twist on things. And so I had somebody ask me, um, you know, she just kind of put it out there. She said, um, "What's the deal with men and monogamy these days?" And you know, like these is, days or is, like is, all, well, at all time. Just in general, but like obviously we're in present time, so we're talking about you know we're not talking about monogamy back in the fifties. We're talking right, about right. monogamy here today in twenty twenty one. You know we're coming up on it's cuffing season right now. You know it's Valentine's and all yeah. that kind of stuff, and you know the whole idea is of cuffed up is being you know monogamous, being being cuffed up with that person. So 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 we're broaching the topic today is you know can today's man be monogamous or men today be monogamous? And man, we got. All kinds of feedback. I was getting text messages and comments and That's just text comments messages, too. man. And people was just it was, it was it, we struck a I feel like a dentist right now, man. We struck a nerve up in this bad boy, man. Does it hurt there? Does it hurt yeah. there? Oh yeah, oh, there um, it is. So this is like a real deal, man. This is a it real is. topic it today, is. man. And uh, and so first of all, again, if you're watching this, hit share because 
you know, because this is going to be a conversation that obviously won't stop tonight. And we can see your comments. If you're yeah. watching this, we want your input tonight, male, female, from both sides. We want your input in the comments. So we can see yeah. your comments as we're talking and uh, and we'll for sure, you know, include that in, into our perspective here. So, uh, yeah, and if you're on the Mad Men and Masculinity page, you put your comments in, it'll definitely pop up for us. I know he's got his other screen open, so it'll pop up there as well. So we'll, we'll get you, we'll get you taken care of. We'll try to answer as many questions and comments as we can, but on the topic of Ooh. men and monogamy Ooh i know i have my perspective Ooh and a lot of this is my own experience and from being a coach and working with men and and having that uh experience with them and and and, and i i thought about it you know do we want to talk about nature versus nurture because i mean and, and okay let's put we'll put it out there just you know this is general we're talking mm -hmm. stereotypes and generalities. Mm -hmm. We know that there are different men. We know that there's some men out there that met their, their girl at 15 and they've been together for 85 years, all that stuff. We, we're talking gener general men, generality. Yeah. And there's no way we can address every lane of the highway. I've got all kinds of, yeah, well, what about this? And what about that? And what about this? And what about that? First of all, I would encourage you to, to kind of chime in here in your comments if that's the case, but there's no way we can, we can sum up like every aspect of this whole thing in a, in a short conversation here, but we're going to do our best. Yeah. And of course, if you do have one of those, yeah, buts, it's a very nice. Yeah. But mm -hmm. however, mm -hmm. you're just, it, it, that's just an ego trick. It's like, right. well, I know what you're saying. I, I dig it. But what about, but what about, mm -hmm. but what about, well, that's just to get you, get us off track or get, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we want to stay on track. We want to go yeah. deep. We want to talk about this in, in a real fashion because yeah. I feel like there's just a lot of expectation. And then there's also a lot of Kind of preconceived notions and i think a lot of it may just be from how society is nowadays and there's a lot of like well this is how it's supposed to be mm -hmm. but is that your experience or is that just what you want it to be like or what you've been told it's supposed to be like yeah i mean so so and i think there's a huge difference between what it's supposed to be like versus what it is and i think that's why we got the feedback that we got back in terms yes. of you know just even the topic today i mean i think there's one perception of what it's supposed to be and then one reality of what it actually really is so so let's get to it man you know so what, what's your take on it man can a man today a male today be monogamous i think he can and of course the way i, I mean in my experience with my life and, and and working with men what i feel like what tends to be the biggest issue is when men try to be monogamous too soon um when they haven't had enough experience you know because in my experience teens 20s even maybe early 30s that's your growth period. That's your becoming a man. That that that's the time you don't want to be. I mean, there's serial monogamy, of course. Mm -hmm. But I mean, getting married too soon. Well, 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 what do you like mean that. by serial monogamy? I, that's, I mean, that's how most people date nowadays. They go, okay, I'm gonna pick you for three to six months, maybe a year or two, and then switch because you don't have everything, or you change, or whatever the. Yeah, you know, we don't trust each other anymore. There's some mm -hmm. distrust because we haven't learned how to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, but just in general, I feel like. A man can be monogamous if he's if he's grown and he's learned to appreciate what he has, and mm -hmm. that usually comes from spending your teens, twenties, thirties, mm -hmm. being out playing the field, learning what you do want, learning what you don't want, and not and probably not settling down too early. And then once you get to a certain age of, and a maturity, and you can appreciate what monogamy brings or what what that relationship brings, and mm -hmm. I think that's why for most men it's better later in life. Mm -hmm. And Granted, you know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't say everybody wait till you're 40 or 50, but I mean, at least get to that place as a man that you know who mm -hmm. you are, you know, you have a good grasp on your purpose and your passions and you, you know what's going to be a good fit for you mm -hmm. and then find somebody who appreciates that. And I think really when it comes down to a nutshell and in, in, in my research, and even just thinking about this topic today, I think the biggest issue is why men can't be an augment even after they've gone through their twenties and, and done all their catting around and everything is they lack of appreciation in the relationship. Mm. You know, we're all, all looking for the bigger, better thing, the BBD, mm. you know, we're mm. all on Twitter and Tinder and all these things going, mm. Oh, well, if you don't f check all my boxes in next. Mm. So, I mean, I think that's my perspective is that yes, a man can be monogamous, but that needs to be later on. Mm -hmm. if he hasn't had, and I've, I've had this conversation with some girls. And I've even seen somebody else talk about this. If you ask a man that you're dating, have you ever been a womanizer or have you ever been like a player? And he says, no, might not be the guy you want to date because that means he hasn't gotten it out of the system yet or he hasn't, you know, sold his royal oats, as it were, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. And yeah. I mean, and I couldn't, you know, 
you can go with it, nature and nurture. I mean, for men, just for our species, just for us as the masculine and the male, I mean, part of our gen, you know, genetics is to spread our seeds far and wide to, to help populate. Mm-hmm. And you look back at the, at the old, uh, the way it used to be, you know, and of course the, the, the female or the feminine was to, to be the, the, the home keeper and, and, and mm-hmm. to, to keep the home fires burning, that kind of thing. But that's back in the day, like you said, we're talking about today. What do you, what do you think? I mean, what's, what's yeah. your um, you know, and again, to reset just for everybody that's out there, um, you know, like, share, all that kind of good stuff. But if you go to the Mad Men of Masculinity Facebook page, um, you can put comments in there. We'll see them. We'll see them live here on our stream. Uh, love to get some feedback from uh, men and women um, in all this respect, whether you agree or disagree. We're OK with disagreeing. Um, we disagree with each other sometimes um, when you're wrong, Jason. Um, but uh, I always give you me. The whole idea of uh, monogamy to me equates to settling down, right? And so it's hard for a man to settle down with a woman until he's settled down with himself yeah. um, in terms of the, the nurture part of that whole thing. I think, you know, some men, you know, achieve that, that goal or that, that place sooner than others. Uh, yeah. For most men, it probably comes later, probably comes after some seasoning probably comes after some failures and letdowns and disappointments. It probably comes after um, just some level of growth and maturity, obviously. Um, and just because a man is of a, is of a certain age doesn't mean he's of a certain maturity, right? So, um, you know, I think you have a whole lot of grown boys walking around. Probably most most males, you know, are 51 out of 100 uh, are, you know, grown, grown boys walking around, right? So there's a sense of um, the nurture of you know, of the, the growth and maturity and the settling down. And then there's the nature part of it. You know, I, I, um, I was talking to somebody earlier, um, actually the, the person that kind of helped spawn this topic and, um, and a couple of people actually that kind of helped formulate just some of some thoughts and ideas around this whole thing, males and females, um, you know, and, and just from a nature part of it, you know, the, the driver behind, the male sense of conquering. And there's a there's an inherent male sense of, of conquer, like the conquering of whatever it is, whether it's his life, himself, his career, uh, a mountain, a lion, shark diving, whatever it is, a woman, women in general, all that kind of stuff. There's an inherent, you know, nature in us to conquer. Well, the driver behind that is from a chemical perspective, dopamine. Right. And and so dopamine is kind of that gas pedal. I teach this in my class, the guys. It's the da- the gas pedal that 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 drives us to go in whatever direction we're pointed in. Um, one of the interesting and, and that's closely tied to even the testosterone build. The testosterone buildup is kind of the, the bulk of that conquering thing. And so the the hitch is one of the ways to peak your dopamine and to get that dopamine hit is variety. And I mean, and so it, the we're almost kind of I don't, I don't want to say doomed or handicapped like it's necessarily a bad thing, but but one of the ways to get that dopamine spike is to have many different things, and and even from a sexuality perspective or a relational perspective, but especially a sexuality perspective, you know, there's a scientific theory called the Coolidge effect, and I wrote about it in my book. Matter of fact, variety is one of the six V's in my book. I'm totally doing a plug right now. Um, but the other V that stimulates dopamine is visualization. So they're, yeah. they're, they're, but there's a Coolidge effect. And the Coolidge effect is a scientific theory that says that mammals can be more productive, reproductive, when there are a plethora or multiple options to pr- reproduce with. So that being said, um, a cow can uh, reduce his refractory period and, and have sex again more often when there's multiple, well, I guess a bull, when there's multiple cows kind of thing. And so from a male perspective, and I'm, this is not an out, this is not an excuse. This is the, the nature part of it all in terms of um, how we're wired. And that's why I think the nurture part of it in terms of us being settling down is important to have that, but then to be able to focus that in the right direction that we want to go in. Yeah. I mean, and that's kind of why I was talking about the, the same thing of, has he had his kind of wild and, and sowing his those thing? Has he had these experiences? Has he found his seasoning? And figured mm-hmm. out what he wants, what he needs. Because mm-hmm. I mean, for men, the, the three main needs are a sense of respect, a sense of purpose, and a sense of control. Mm-hmm. And most men, unless they're just one of those lucky ones that knows from the time they're a teen, a teenager and 
hormones hit and they're like, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Most of them take a while to find that. Mm -hmm. And once they find that, then they know who they are. They know who's going to be a good partner for them. And they've had that time and those experiences. So, because I think in, in my experience, I know a lot of the men that I've worked with in men's group and things, we're out there just following that dopamine hit. We're out there looking for that variety. We're out there mm -hmm. just chasing whatever we can. And after a while, after those experiences, we go, you know what? I want some no. more quality over quantity. Right, you know, right, I, right, I, right. I've, I've tried the buffet. Yeah. Now I know what I want. I know what's going to be good for me. And that's where some of that maturity comes in where they go, okay. Right. You know, and, and yes, it's, it is true. You know, just the, the, the thrill mm -hmm. of the new. Yeah. Part of that variety. It gets, gets you that dopamine hit. And so I can see why as soon as a relationship starts to get troubled, there's that fear of, is he going to cheat? Is he going to move on? Or, you know, are we going to work on it? And it's, it's, it can sometimes be too easy, especially nowadays with the swipe culture, you know, Oh, yeah. are we having trouble in our relationship? Oh, well, let me just go over and start swiping. Yeah. You know, I think, it, you know, and then you totally add in the, the internet factor of it all. And the internet factor of it all is, you know, you have online dating um, where it's, you know, it, People, local people, you know, I'm just going to generically say women, um, you know, that the people that are out there looking for dates. And so there's always, yeah, you're, you're totally right early with the whole swipe culture of just the dating aspect of, okay, if I found this person, then maybe there's somebody, whatever, maybe there's some, and, and women do it too. Um, but, the, but, um, but there's the online dating culture. And then when you, when you just throw almost the, the, uh, I'm going to say the, the, the pornification of, of just the the screen uh, interaction with human beings, and and even from that perspective, from a guy, you know, that's a way for a guy to consume variety and to consume visuality, and and uh, and again, it's it's the dopamine spike. But but yeah, I mean, I think when you when when we make relationships about a screen, um, then that's when we get offhand, and that's when it's like, well, what about the next one? What about the next one? If I can get this one, then maybe I can get another one, and and it can just get off off the rails really quick. Yeah, I mean, I've had experience with other guys and, and, and just with <laughs> coaching people and just even hearing through friends and stuff like that. This isn't even just becoming a guy problem. This is becoming a couple, you know, male or female problem where there, there's yeah. too much variety. There's too much access. Yeah. And so there's less quality time. There's less desire to actually work on the relationship. And then, of course, there's always the misconception or the, the preconceived notion that this person and this is my person. They've got to be everything for me. Yeah. Which I mean, the reason we used to live in tribal society, we used to live in villages and there used to be this, you know, the tribe is because it takes a village. It takes a tribe to yeah. fulfill all those needs and to, and to create a healthy community. And so the fact that we're looking at one person to be all those things, I mean, you couldn't be everything for one woman. Yeah. I couldn't be everything for one woman. Mm -hmm. They couldn't be everything for us. Yeah. And that I think starts the that kind of downward spiral. Well, he can't be everything for me or she can't be everything for me. So I'll just go online and start swiping. Right. But that just creates that vicious cycle of, like you said, the dopamine hits, but there's, it's, it's shallow. There's no depth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it, it also, I mean, you, you almost condition yourself, I guess you can say to, to not connect, mm -hmm. to not, to not have intimacy. I mean, you, you can't have intimacy where there's no depth. Right. So, so when you, when you live just that surface, whether it's vertical or horizontal, when you live just on the surface, you don't experience the, the depth of that. But I think once you get past the depth of the surface experience, I think there's plenty of variety to be had. I think there's plenty of, you know, and that being said, you got to be whole and complete in yourself first and foremost before you try to find any of that, you know, within or, or alongside somebody else, you can't have somebody else complete you. So if you're looking for somebody else to, to come in and complete you, well, then that's consumption, that's entertainment. You know, are you looking for entertainment? Or are you looking for, for intimacy? You know, are you looking for inter, you know, containment? <laughs> Ooh, you like that. <laughs> I saw that look on your face, but, um, you know, I mean, and so I think, you know, I think in terms of, you know, in terms of, you know, just the, the, the shallow, the, the online culture today, it just makes it so, so much more difficult to, to, um, to really settle down and be settled from a nurturing perspective and just, um, you know, just like, I'm okay with just being with this one person, whatever that means with you and that person, yeah. you know, I mean, let's just be real and grown up and honest. There are some people out there that, you know, it's okay with them to be in open relationships. 
you know, there, there, there are people out there that um, whatever. I mean, there's all kinds of variety of what that looks like. But I think it comes down to, in my opinion, it's the intimacy monogamy. Um, you know, it's it's to me that that's that's the that's my personal definition of of, uh, of what is monogamy and what does it look like is is, you know, it's intimate you know, monogamy. And so I don't know. I mean, I think guys, you know, I think we can. I mean, I, I think that's why I wanted to bring out first, like, has the guy been wild? Has he had his variety? Yeah. Because once we've gone through that surface, once we've had those experiences, and I think sometimes what happens is they, they follow the, the shoulds, you know, this is how you do life. You know, the American dream, you go to high school, you go to college, you get married, you have kids. But in, they did, they missed the variety or the, or the getting out there and experiencing and then getting the seasoning. And so they stay surface and they think the surface is the important thing. Yeah. But until you've had that experience of enough of the surfacey stuff to go, you know what? I really want depth. I really want that intimacy. I really, and now that I know who I am and what fuels me and what fills me up and I can yeah. share that with somebody else. And if we're a match and we can support each other in that way, mm -hmm. that's where that real intimacy comes from. And I think that's why a lot of times there's just that, almost natural like older guy younger woman thing because women mature faster than men i mean so there's that almost like okay well if i'm in my mid-30s 40s and she's in her late 20s 30s we might mm -hmm. actually be somewhere on the same wavelength mm -hmm. and even genetically if we're talking about child rearing mm -hmm. you know men can still you know sire children as long as this, everything still works mm -hmm. you know there's there's right. a period for for women that you know at some point that kind of stops but if you're looking for somebody to settle down, you're looking for a guy to be a monogamous, make sure, number one, he knows who he is. Mm -hmm. he, he has a good self, you know, sense of self. He has, he knows what his purpose is and you're okay with his purpose and you want to support that purpose. Mm -hmm. What I'm seeing a lot of is there's a lot of this, the, the bigger, better deal thing. Like, well, I really love him, but he doesn't look like the guy at the gym. Or I really love him, but he doesn't have as much money as the guy over there. Mm -hmm. I really love him, but... He's not six foot. Yeah, you know, he's not had the big six. He's not six foot, six pack abs, and six figures. Mm -hmm. And so they go, well, there must be some other guy that fits all those criteria. Yeah. Well, what you're looking for is four, four of the guys. You're looking yeah. for the six foot guy, the guy with the six pack abs, the guy with six figures, and the other guy that's going to take care of all, yeah. all the other stuff. <laughs> but from a from a guy perspective, though, I mean, to you know, from from a a, a man's perspective in terms of can I can a man be monogamous. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it's possible. I, I would almost, as I listen to you explain that, I would almost think that it, in my opinion, it's more so, or, or I, I'll start off with less so maybe, um, him having time to sow his royal oats and more so him having time to discover his true identity. Because I think you have to have, in order to be monogamous, you, you got to be settled. In order to be settled, you got to be resolved. In order to be resolved, you got to have your identity straight, whatever that is. Um, and, it, you know, until he doesn't, until, I'm going to speak to women, until he doesn't need you, <laughs> until he doesn't need you to validate him, then he ain't never going to be ready to be monogamous with you. How about that? I mean, because yeah. if a guy is looking for validation from women, from a woman, whether she's virtual or real, if a guy is still looking for validation, that means he's not settled in his own identity. And if he's not settled in his own identity, he's always going to be looking for affirmation from women in general. And so the whole, you know, I'm going to keep texting and, and looking for other women while I'm dating this one, that's looking for affirmation. That's looking for a sense of, of you know, am I good or am I attractive or am I enough for women as opposed to am I enough for this woman? So if he's still looking for you ladies to validate him, then 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 you ain't he ain't ready to be monogamous with you and so until the until you get to the point where you found the man that don't need you <laughs> and it's kind of a trip too because nowadays it's like whenever you're if i feel like anyway as a guy when you're nice to women especially if it's like on social media so whenever you're nice to women they assume that you want them kind of thing <laughs> you know maybe it's because like you know they it happens over and over again like every guy wants them because they're nice and i'm like Girl, I, I don't want you like, you know, I mean, and, and so but I think when a guy gets settled in that place where he's secure in who he is and and he's no longer looking for female validation, affirmation is great. Right. Cheer me on all day long. 
but you will not give me my identity. I know who I am and, and what I am and my purpose. And, and until you get to that point as a man, you're not ready to be monogamous. Yeah. And what you, I mean, to, to Kirk's point, if he's looking for validation, if he needs you to boost him up and everything, he's not ready yet. But if he's looking for appreciation, like he knows who he is and he's looking mm-hmm. for somebody who appreciates who he is, mm-hmm. that's somebody you want to spend time with. Right. When he's spent enough time to know who he is and all he's looking for is somebody who appreciates who he is and who he's being. Mm-hmm. And I know that's probably the number one issue in most relationships is that we, we stop appreciating each other. Yeah. Because we let little things go, we stop communicating. And so as the appreciation decreases, mm-hmm. I mean, it, the reason they call it appreciation for houses and cars and, and valuables, as the appreciation decreases, then the stability of that foundation of that relationship also decreases mm-hmm. and also starts to decay. Mm-hmm. So he's looking for all the validation, all the, he, he's still in that finding himself mode. And he doesn't have to be sowing his wild oats. He doesn't have to be having wild affairs with all the women. He could be on a spiritual search. He could be on mm-hmm. a, a, a search of, of, of knowledge. Mm-hmm. But until he finds out who he is, and sometimes he may not find out who he is until he has a family or he finds that person. And he goes, oh, that was my missing piece. That's mm-hmm. that's that makes me feel whole. Yeah. But that's because he needed that. Val- he needed to find his own like I needed to be in that situation. Right. But right. He knows who he is and is looking for somebody to appreciate that. then he may not be able to be monogamous because he's yeah. still looking for validation. and He's looking for the well, maybe she's better. Maybe that's yeah. better. Maybe this yeah. is better. Yeah. When you can appreciate a good man then that's somebody not only does he see value in your appreciation and your and, and then by that he wants to walk alongside of you and live life alongside of you then you become that much more important to him and he's willing to protect that and to guard that and to value that and to cherish that and all those kinds of things um that's one thing uh, you know but but yeah and so here as you were talking man i think okay let, let me let me cut to the meat let me let me cut to the white meat for for some for some women out here Part of the reason, I think, why a lot of women end up with the guy that, that is not able to settle down and be, and be monogamous is because monogamous guy is not shiny. <laughs> monogamous guy is not shiny not object. Bad it's, it's, not new, bad it's, not, it's not shiny object, new car smell, got everything looking together on it. You know, he, he drives his car. He looks all the six things that you were just talking about. He's not shiny. He's not, he's not the, the ooh, ah kind of guy. Matter of fact, he's probably the guy that, that quite often falls below the radar. And so you got a ton of good guys out here, but the reality is ladies, can you see him? If you're looking for the shiny object in a man, you're not going to see him. His shiny object is in his heart, it's in his chest, right? And so if you're not beneath the surface, then you're never going to see that. And so unfortunately, when you chase the shiny object guy, he's probably shiny because he's trying to get attention from women in general. And and he's trying to say, hey, validate me, validate me. And again, that guy cannot be monogamous. So I think a lot of reasons why, one of the reasons maybe why, uh, why I hear, now I'm hearing definitely today, a lot of women, you know, keep coming across these kind of guys, I think it's because, you know, maybe just maybe it's looking for the shiny object It's looking for the, the profile picture that looks like this and just the, this and whatever. And then, you know, then you meet them and, uh, you know, there's a whole lot of things that, that aren't very impressive on the surface to monogamy guy. Yeah. Well, there's two other things while you're talking that, that, that came to mind. I definitely want to bring up. So ladies, while you're watching this, it's, it, 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 it's real time. I mean, if you don't know what a hypergamy is, look it up. Because how hypergamy plays out in the dating world is that most ladies have now been trained to look for the big six. You know, you want six foot, you want six pack abs, you want six figures. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, only 13.5% of the population of men in the United States is six foot plus. So you've already cut off 70, 80, was it 86.5% of the population. So now you have this big gap. So now all of you ladies are looking towards that top 13%. And so those guys are not ever going to be monogamous because they don't have to be because they've got all the attention and they can just bounce and have all the fun they want getting all the attention. And when that, when that becomes the, the, the truth or when that becomes the experience and everybody, you know, we have a lot of ladies looking in that direction. Like you want all to the guy to be shiny and, and to have all those things. 
then you're missing a lot of the good guys who are actually doing the work. And like, like Kirk said, they may not be shiny. They may not be dull either. Yeah. They just may not have all those things that you're looking for, you know? And, yeah. and also you look, be, be real about what is going to be a match for you. If, it, if they're outside your number or your, your lane, our, our friend, uh, Kara talks a lot about, you know, staying in your lane. Mm-hmm. It, it, if you're looking for Brad Pitt, but you're not Jennifer Aniston, you're not in your lane. Mm-hmm. So something to keep in mind. Also, if you're looking for somebody to be deep with, you're looking for somebody, then you, you have to be willing to do the work as well, to be appreciative and to be able to, to come in. You Because it's not 50-50, it's 100-100. Mm-hmm. Both of you need to be 100% in that relationship. Mm-hmm. You both need to be committed to communication and, and appreciation and respect. Yeah. And if you're not doing if you're not willing to do that then why would he be willing to do that because that's yeah. one of the things that is definitely because of the hypergamy there's the MGTOW movement now men going yeah. their own way and there's a lot of men that are just it's it's not worth it you know with all the online dating and i don't get any responses and i'm a good guy and i make money and i do i, I take care of myself but because i'm not six foot six pack abs six figures i don't get any attention so they're like yeah. well it, I'm out of here. Yeah. And I think we got, we just got some great feedback here. Somebody says, um, Chase says, I fall for the charmer guy who gives big compliments from the beginning, flirty charm, charm, charm. But that outgoing flirty guy isn't just flirty with me, mainly because I'm sh- shy. So I need the guy to make first move. And then usually that guy focuses attention on multiple women. I think that speaks, in my opinion, that speaks directly to guy looking for validation. Yep. He's like the overly peacock, you know, big feathers. You know, I want to, you know, you know, he's not willing to walk. He wants to run. He doesn't want to walk. He don't want to walk to have it all. He wants to run to have it now. Um, and so I, to me, that speaks to guy that that is, um, you know, guy that is that is trying really hard for the sake of the validation part of it for his own personal ego, for the for his own personal unbalanced and unsettled, unsettled ego. That was great feedback. And thank you so much, Tracy, for that. Um, um so, yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, I think when, when we when and, and again, especially since we have, you know, a couple of women here providing input and feedback and, and I, we found that most of our audience tends to be women kind of peeking in on the on the uh, the, the glass house that is masculinity. Um, you know, I think, you know, I think ladies, I mean, I, and I guess guys, for that matter, if the guy is is trying too hard and peacocking too hard then to me that that says he um you know he 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 wants to to get something from you as opposed to uh build something with you um and and you almost just have to i I hate to say it but you almost just have to be careful with that guy because that guy the, the charmer 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 guy can he do that for long now, you know, does that mean a guy's going to stick around forever? I remember, you know, when I was in the dating world, like if there was no, I, I'm like, I'll pursue, but I'll never chase. Like if I'm looking at your back, then I'm chasing you. But if there's an echo and a bounce back, then okay, I'm cool with that. So I would say when you get the charmer guy, you know, give him a breadcrumb, like, okay, you know, it's like a, I'm going to just say it, it's like training him. You give him a breadcrumb, you know, okay, that's good. You know, you give him a treat. It's like a seal. You throw him a fish or whatever, or, you know, you, you give him that and okay, that's cool. And then, you know, and then just judge and then sit back. Women have this beautiful thing called intuition. And you all know, like you all know when something ain't right, you know, and, and I would say give, you know, give that guy time to let him know that you're interested, you know, give him the feedback, but at the same time, you know, give him time to, to see if that if that sticks around or not. And if it doesn't stick around, then it was, you know, it was it was gasoline. It wasn't diesel. Well, and that brings up a good point, too. Like we all have to check ourselves, especially mm-hmm. nowadays, because mm-hmm. we have all the fantasy in the world. We've got all the screens. We got all these mm-hmm. pictures. There's so many ladies now who are getting on online and, and showing all kinds of pictures that any man could just get on for whether it's for attention or for mm-hmm. finances or mm-hmm. just you know, trying to be famous, I don't know, but we have this, this fantasy going on that, oh, well, I'm five foot five and I'm 250 pounds, but I can still get this girl or that guy. Mm-hmm. Like, we need to, to, to have a reality with our fantasy and realize what lane are we in? What are we bringing to the table? Yeah. And would that person want us. And I think that's the biggest, you know, reality check pill to swallow. Right. Would that want us? Yeah. And I can tell you in my experience, you can tell if somebody wants you 
by whether they're willing to reciprocate. Just like right. Kirk was saying, are they reciprocating? Or mm -hmm. are you putting in all the work and just chasing them and they're mm -hmm. not giving any attention back or any reciprocation? Right. Guys, if they're not, ladies, if they're not, don't don't waste your time. They may be hot, yeah. but if there's no reciprocation, then they're not interested. Yeah. And they're not willing to put the work in, obviously. They're yeah. not willing to put in that yeah. it's work that's required to get to that intimacy, to get to the actual partnership. Yeah. Now, I personally think yeah, a guy should work. I mean, I, I personally think there should be some effort up front. I think there should be some wooing. Or there, I mean, you know, guy will get dressed up in all camo and and spray deer pee all over himself to go sit up in a tree and wait for a deer to come by to kill him, right? So, I mean, if, if a guy is willing to put some work and effort into that and fishing and career and all that kind of stuff, then he should also, when he meets a woman, he should also be um, heavily invested in in pursuing her. And I don't think pursuit of of a woman's heart from a man should ever stop, right? I mean, especially when you get in into that into that, um, into that, that monogamy or that, that, that committed state. But, you know, again, pursuing is definitely different than chasing. Um, and, um, and so, and so I think, I think a guy should always lead in that pursuit, but I think a woman should always reciprocate, um, in, in that pursuit process as well. But, but I think you do have to test a guy. I mean, I know when I meet guys, not, I mean, obviously not romantic cause I don't roll like that. Some guys do, but I don't. Um, but when I meet a guy, I'm always kind of like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm chilling this and I'm going to check out this guy in the long term. And that's when I find deep relationship in in men in a good way. That's how I mean, you know, that's how you and I got. So that's how I trust you so much. You know, you stayed at my house. You've I mean, we've done work together with all that kind of stuff. we do this together because over time, man. I mean, just for the sake of my life, and I hope I've done the same to you, but you've proven over the course of, of me knowing you that you are a reliable, rock solid kind of guy, man. And you've been there. Um, but that's not the kind of thing that that somebody would find out in, in a short, in a short quick. I mean, like, like, you know, I was listening to uh, Mind Like a Monk by Jay Shetty when he was talking about the, the five C's or three mm -hmm. C's and character is one of them. And, and mm -hmm. you're my example of character. And of mm -hmm. course, without having spent time with you and getting to know you, I wouldn't know your character. Yeah. But when it comes to dating and we're, you know, getting kind of getting off track, but we're coming back around. Yeah. When it comes to men and monogamy, and yes, men shouldn't, you know, if if we follow the natural masculine and feminine tendencies, men should be the pursuer. However, and this is from experience and you know, and the reason I say this, if you are pursuing and there's no reciprocation mm -hmm. and there's no effort and she just feels like you're going to give all and she doesn't have to give anything because she you know, she's the princess and that's what mm -hmm. you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. there, there comes a stop point. Mm -hmm. There comes a reality check. Right. And yeah, we want to be the pursuer. That's part of our DNA. We want to be the hunter. We want to be out there and, and pursuing. But if there's no reciprocal, if, if there's nothing coming back, then in the long term, when it comes to partnership, then it's not a partnership. Yeah. And I love what Amy just said. Uh, Amy just said per true pursuing shows that he's thinking about her when they're apart. It's the little things never has to be. Um, big ways of pursuing. And the reason they go hand in hand is because pursuit goes along with monogamy. If he is, if he is committed to you and if he's monogamous with you, then he's pursuing you. Uh, but again, I want to, pursuing is totally different than chasing. Chasing guy is chasing because he's a hunter. And when he hunts you, every guy that hunts, when he catches whatever it is, as he's hunting, he mounts it. <laughs> chasing I've guys before. Well, I I he's also that, hiding in bushes. He's, he's gonna mount you one way or another. He's gonna mount you on the wall as a trophy, yeah. or he's gonna mount you as something else that he wants to consume or 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 have a part of. And so, you know, there's a totally different, total big difference between pursuing and chasing. But um, you know, you don't want chase guy. You want pursuit guy. Um, but, you know, but pursuit guy. You know, they, again, they, the two of those go go completely hand in hand with the whole idea of his commitment and what that looks like to you. And there's also, especially when you get into relationships and you want to get the depth, there is that mutual pursuit. This guy's going to pursue, but he's going to get tired. And yeah. At some point, he's going to need a little, you know, that reciprocation mm -hmm. for you, ladies, is you pursue him back or you let him be okay. And that's mm -hmm. even part of that, you know, the leash analogy. Because yeah. for guys, for us to feel free, we need to be able to run to the end of our leash. We need to be able to go out with our boys. We need to go hunting. We need to go whatever recharges us so we can mm -hmm. feel some Mm -hmm. And as soon as we are allowed to have that freedom, we're going to run right back to you. And that's maybe part of that, your pursuit or your allowing, allow him off or allow him some space. Or if he's just tired and beat down, then maybe be, you pursue him a little and mm -hmm. help build him back up. I mean, that's what partnership is about. It's about supporting us when we're weak. 
yeah. uh, supporting our, our weaknesses and with our strengths and vice versa and, and working towards a common goal. Yeah. So I think that and I, that comes down to even the, the, the men's big three, you know, our needs. We need that purpose. We need that sense of purpose. And if our families are purpose, if the relationships are purpose or our jobs are purpose, we're looking for partnership in that. We're looking for someone to to join in that. And that's part mm-hmm. of that. If you're putting in all the effort, guys, or ladies even, if you're putting in all the effort and he's the, the big six guy, he's got all the all the big six, you know, things checked off, he's not gonna be putting any effort into you. Mm-hmm. You're gonna be looking for to call him, you're gonna be pursuing him, he's not putting any effort in. So are you wanting a partnership? Are you wanting monogamy? Yeah. Are you wanting a relationship? That cre- that, that that needs to be worked yeah. from both sides. Yeah, and you got to nurture that when you find that guy, like when you find that guy, like hold on to that guy, like nurture that guy. Like, I mean, let that guy know that you see him, you know, let that guy know that that that, you know, that that you value that in him, that you recognize that in him, affirm that in him again, affirmation different than validation, affirm that in him when you see him. But yeah, I mean, it, it definitely goes both ways, because if good guy is there and good guys investing and good guys monogamous and you tripping. <laughs> out good guy is like douches bye felicia you know i mean he's gone right so i mean good guy ain't gonna stick around from that because good guy knows he's a rarity good guy knows he's a commodity and good guy knows that the right woman is gonna see him and the, and the right woman is gonna is gonna commit to him in the ways that he's committing to her so that definitely goes both ways yeah and do keep in mind ladies especially if you're out in the dating world there are a lot of good guys who are very frustrated and they're tired of the game mm-hmm. and if you're not willing to appreciate them if you're not willing to put in a little effort and you're do, playing the oh chase me game he may if he's attracted to you for a little bit but it's not going to be like the other guy who's in the bushes watching you all night long he's only going to mm-hmm. pursue you for a little bit if there doesn't seem to be any end to the pursuit or any uh gain he's gonna be out yeah you know there, there's a there's a fine line between a guy that's really romantic and a stalker and the difference is whether or not you think he's cute um which i mean it comes down to i, I almost wonder and maybe this is a follow-up conversation that we have i almost wonder on the flip side can women be monogamous these days because women can be just as you know next guy up as as men can be next woman up i mean and yeah. I, I think and this is i'm just gonna be real can i keep it real yes I'm absolutely be real I think, you know, for a woman, if she has, you know, three bees, you know, she she's good to go. Bees being her babies, uh, her bucks and her batteries. <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to be real. Right. I mean, like, it, you know, it's, it's very easy for women to swipe and keep going and, you know, bigger, better kind of thing as well. So. I mean that that's something that that's a kind of an interesting twist on, on this whole thing as well. Well, that's kind of where things are going, and I mean it's kind of sad, and and maybe it's just a, a shift in society or a shift in our mindset, but we're kind of getting to more of that swipe, just instant fix sort of thing. So, and yeah. it's not just guys; it's ladies as well, and it's it's both sides. And so, yeah. I think it really comes down to that soul searching: Are yeah. you ready to be monogamous? Because if you're ready to be monogamous, you're ready to put the work in. Yeah. If you're not ready to put the work in, you're not ready to be monogamous. Yeah. That's, so let's bring this plane in for a landing, man. They always say whenever you do Facebook lives, do them short. But man, we we go deep. I mean, that's just how mad men and men do. We, we break the mold, man. We break the mold and we go deep. And we we we. This is this is this is uh this is uh this is important to us, man. This is how, this is how, how we do. Roll. If it's too long, you can stop it. But we go deep. You can, you can go to YouTube done. later and break it up. You didn't. We're we're, we're we're finishers. We finish. <laughs> we finish well. That's how we do. We finish. Right. Um. So, man, but uh, so in terms of can a man be monogamous Can today's man be monogamous? I think, yes, I think absolutely. I mean, I think there's a ton of good guys out there. I know a bunch of them. Um, I think the I think the difference is, you know, do they nurture and I mean, have the, has their nurturing overcome their nature in terms of them being settled with their identity and, and who they are, what they are? Ladies, a uh, very good question for you to ask. Right up front, when you meet a guy in a dating scenario, is what's your purpose in life? If he cannot answer that, and on top of that, he's not doing any kind of personal work, personal growth, deuces. I mean, I mean, don't even waste your time with that. But it, I mean, ask a guy, what's your purpose? And I mean, I'm telling you. And then if he if he can answer that, does that purpose lined up with something that you can get behind or or, or live under? Um, but I think when he's settled in that, I think absolutely the right guy can be can be monogamous. Um, Tina's is manipulative game playing is toxic. Men and women do it. It's not necessary unless you are a player. Okay. Thank you for that. 
Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, I think the answer to the question is yes, you know, yes. And yes, with some caveats, yes, but, yeah. uh, but, um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's my take on the JBK. Well, and for me, it's, it especially comes down to what's it for. And ladies, mm -hmm. if you're out meeting guys or you're out of the bar or whatever, and he asks you out, ask him what for. If he doesn't have a good answer, if he starts to stammer, then he just wants to, he just thinks you're cute or wants to get in your pants. What do you mean? What for? What do you mean by what that? For? Like, what's, what, why do you want to take me out? Why, why do you uh, want to get my number? What, what mm -hmm. for? What's the purpose behind it? Mm -hmm. If he doesn't have a purpose of like, I want to get to know you. There's something about you. Like there, I have this feeling and, and then you can start with that. What's your purpose? You know, mm -hmm. this and that it's You can save yourself a lot of time and just say, well, what for? Yeah. Now, if you know what your purpose is, if you're out with the ladies and it's just one of those nights and you're just looking for some as well, have, have all the fun. You're it, it's, it's, 2021 and you know right. you have all the power in the world if you're ready to settle down if you're ready to be monogamous and and you know what your purpose is then yeah. what you're looking for is somebody with the same purpose you're looking for somebody with the same yeah. goal because the reason yeah. for monogamy and partnerships and intimacy is having a common goal to work towards whether that's Absolutely. family or world travel or taking over the world or you know yeah. save millions of people whatever you know your your heart's desire is whatever your purpose and goal is should be interconnected with your partners and that's yeah. how you can make that long lasting appreciative relationship yeah i mean purpose guy can be fun this doesn't mean you got to give up fun purpose guy can be fun i would say not every fun guy can have purpose but for surely every purpose guy can have fun um but uh, doing our purpose that's probably what we're the most <laughs> you know and, and building it together you know what i'm saying ladies if you're looking for a boy then you know then then have at it and boy is going to leave you crying at the end of the day every time you know it because you've experienced it over and over again. If you've experienced it over and over again, the common factor is you. Um, so let's just be real. I mean, it, you know, let's let's change, you know, what you're seeing or what you're looking for. And, what, and when you change what you're looking for, what you're seeing will will uh, will appear in front of you. So, um, man, this has been some dope stuff, JBK. Oh, yeah. And I, I hope you had some of your questions answered. I hope yeah. you, some of this made sense to you. And if it didn't leave comments, yeah. definitely send us, you know, personal messages, DMS, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. If you have some other topic you want to talk about, I know we have a couple in the pipeline that we were thinking about that are kind of related to this going down. So we'll probably do those yeah. as well, but let us know. Cause we want to talk about what you want to talk about. We yeah. want to hit those hot buttons yeah. because it helps us. And I hope it helps you as well. Yeah. Hit share. I mean, continue this whole thing again, Mad Men and Masculinity, like, like the page and you'll know, uh, you'll know when, when we, when we're, when we're about to broadcast something and, uh, we'd love to, to build a community and, and to have these open dialogues. This is some good stuff, man. If, we, wanna, if, you, if you're, if you're tired of streaming Netflix and you want to stream the Mad Men, go on Netflix or go on YouTube. And oh yeah. Look at Mad Men and Masculinity. All of our prior, well, majority of our prior videos are on mm -hmm. YouTube. So you can go back and watch all of them. No doubt. And I think they're on the Mad Men page as well. A bunch of them are on there, too. So uh, we haven't had this much engagement as far as comments uh, on, on one in a while in a long time. man. so this is good. So maybe Ooh. maybe we come back and do this again. If y'all want us to continue this conversation or if you have a twist or some input or whatever, you know, man, if, if one of y'all want to want to jump on here, we've had somebody just jump on and join us before. So uh, give us some feedback and uh, we'll absolutely respond to that. And we we love having these deep conversations for for men and for women so uh now what if people want to get a hold of the connection catalyst mr mm. jason b kendrick himself how can they get a hold of you you're an author you're a, you're a, you're a coach you work with people i mean you do dynamic stuff man what if people want to get a hold of you how can they do that i'm easy to get a hold of you look at underneath my pretty face here jasonbkendrick.com it's a good place to look see what i'm up to you can find some old videos you can find my contact information you can find links to the books that are right there and you know I hang out with cool people, you know, this, this man over here, the intimacy incubator, who I know is my guru of character, my guru of purpose. This man is, is, is the bomb.com. If somebody wants to get a hold of the intimacy incubator, Mr. Kirk M. Samuels, how would they do that? I'm giving the people's out uh, people's eyebrow right now. <laughs> like, who? I think he's about me, man. It's <laughs> easy. Yeah. Kirk M. Samuels.com. My book is there, but I mean, all my work that I do is there podcasts, all that kind of stuff is there. Easy to get a hold of me. Uh, shoot my phone numbers on the website. Um, so yeah, we're, we're here to serve, you know, again, we do this Facebook live just cause we like to stimulate conversation and all this we're other kind of like stuff. This, with or without you, we just figured you might want to. Sure <laughs> so again, give us feedback, let us know, share, like, you know, all those other kind of things. And, and we if will. If you haven't gone on Kurt's website and gotten his book, mm -hmm. you need to. 
this is not just for men. It's not just, for, you know, it, it's for everybody. Yeah. If you're in a relationship in the digital age today, you need to read Kirk's yeah. book. Uh, and I'm going I'm to I'm I'm cut to the chase. I'm going to keep it real. In my book, I, I share ways that women can hack the male psyche in terms of his sexuality. I, I address, uh, you know, all these things, the dopamine, the visual, the variety, all that kind of stuff. But then I give the insights as to how men are wired from the inside out and how you ladies can can benefit from that in, in the ways there are ways that that a woman can introduce variety in his life, the same woman. So. So, yeah, I mean, JBK, you, you posted your book uh, uh, online here a second ago. I, I saw that a little a few minutes ago on on, uh, on your page. So anyhow. Yeah. So we, we love y'all. And again, we love giving giving us feedback. Let us know the things you're experiencing, the things you want us to unpack. And we will definitely do it. Thank you for all of you that have jumped on here today. Uh, Tina, Amy, Tracy, um, Nicole. I mean, we thank all of y'all. And uh, and again, we, we love to continue this conversation. So uh, we will talk with you all next time. All right. We love y'all. We'll see you next time. Peace.